Hey guys, this is Dusty Allen here um, in my classroom, and I'm here to tell you about historicism. And my historian that goes along with it is, his name is Wilhelm Delphi. Again, I'm going to try to butcher his name, but that's pretty close to Wilhelm Delphi. Again, he was from Germany. Uh, he was born in 1833, and I'm just going to go ahead and get it out, out, out here 15 seconds into my video. I question to call him a historian. Uh, one of the journal entries we had, or one of the uh, JSTOR articles, was from Gerard Massour. And this guy here, he calls it out in the first, first page. He says, you know, his stature as a thinker remained in limbo. Like, I get this idea that some people say, you know what? He might not have been a historian. So in my paper, I kind of talk about that. I talk about how in uh, the Bursich paper book, Bursich basically says he doesn't really care about the metaphysical world, which he's constantly talking about these forces and spirits that control. But Bursich says that he believed in a self-controlled world, that he has no room for God. He has no room for a spirit. And what was the big thing about Dilthey is he kind of gets credit for separating sciences into two balloons, two bubbles, whatever you want to call it. And he had natural sciences, which are like your science class stuff. And speaking of my history class, human sciences or social sciences. But Bursich talks about how the big German word, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, it starts with a G. It's got the word like geist at the first of it. And Bursich says, to translate that into English, it's better translated as mind instead of spirit. So that kind of um, snowballing off of that, when Bursich says that he didn't care about the metaphysical world, I just don't know. I really feel like, because like Bursich says on page 282 that he banned all absolutes from his system, even generalizations. He, div he believed he had a vague idea that history or society advanced higher and achieved higher and higher throughout time, which you do see that in his writings. He talks about, it starts with kind of even like cavemen and how we progress from cavemen and how we get into the Greeks and how Greeks give us kind of a political unit idea. And then he goes into Rome and he talks about the art and literature in Rome. And then he goes into medieval times talking about what's going on. There's a part where he talks about separating the natural man and the supernatural world during the medieval times to kind of contrast in them. But again, I don't know. I don't know if he was a real a historian. He was a philosopher. He was a scientist. He constantly, constantly, in both of the articles we had, the, both the writings by uh, Dilthey, we had, he talked about the conscience, the conscience, the conscience. That was his big thing. But another thing he covers and another thing he talks about is that the individual really didn't matter. And that's kind of the idea of historicism is that there is this bigger picture. The way that Dilthey describes it, it's in the first page of his Introduction to Human Sciences. And it says that basically society was a factory. And say it's a car factory. We'll just we'll play it as a car factory. And say that you make the brake pad you put in the brake uh, pedal, and I put in the gas pedal. We might be on a different sides of the factory. We might not ever see each other. I, every day, make my brake pedal, but I have no idea you're making your gas pedal. But we end up making a car. And that's kind of what he says about history, is that there's these forces that we have no ideas going on, but the end result occurs. So he kind of talks about stuff like that, but then he'll kind of throw in history stuff. Like the last page of uh, Introduction to Human Sciences, he talks about the idea that we have this, the political judgment that condemns an institution is not true or false, but rather incorrect or correct. So again, he kind of throws in those political terms. And then the other one we had was the formation of a historical world in human sciences. And I think I actually accidentally read more than what we're supposed to, but it gave me a question, so we're going to get that here in a second. And this one just kind of talks about how you, again, it had history stuff. It talks about history stuff, but it basically just challenged the individual 
to the forces, the metaphysical world, the whatever you want to call it, that actually control things. And that the individual did not really have a significance. It was more of just, it was going to happen. So that was my paper. Again, I really enjoyed reading about this guy, but he made my head hurt because I thought, is he a historian? Like, is he really somebody you're going to hear talk about history? Because he really sounds like a philosopher or a psychologist or even a scientist, which, again, that was his big thing because he separated the sciences. All right, so let's go into questions because I got three. They're, they're pretty deep, okay? The first one, again, I accidentally read more than we were supposed to on, I think, I don't know for sure, certain, on the part where it says the formation of the historical world in, in human sciences. And he goes into a part in the biography. If you read that part of the biography, he talks about biography and an autobiography, and he talks about biography as an artwork. And I have a question off of that. And it basically is this. Is a biography an accurate measure of a historical event? Is a biography of a person an accurate measure of a historical event? Okay, let's just go big picture. Let's go Civil War. You're doing the Civil War. Is a biography of Stonewall Jackson an accurate description of the Civil War? Again, in that part of the biography, he goes into talking about biographies. And he talks about how, what are they there for? Are they something that could help us learn history? So again, question number one, is a biography an accurate measure of a historical event? Okay, yes or no, explain, all that good stuff. All right, that's number one. Number two, we kind of had this question earlier because I feel like I remember like the first week or second week, I remember answering kind of this question. But Dilthey goes into it. Again, his big thing is history was going to happen with or without somebody rising up, okay? So question number two, is historical events inevitable? Are historical events inevitable? That's number two. That one, again, he goes into outside forces. So let's go, let's go, let's just go to it. The Crusades. Again, I'm a world history teacher. We just got through talking about the Crusades. Or this week, we're talking about Martin Luther and the Reformation. Would the Reformation happen without Luther? Would something occurred would somebody else I feel like that's a good question is history inevitable is our historical events inevitable that's number two and the third one we're going to just go right into it we're just going to go right into his title is history a science is history a science I, this is a question I've had before making this presentation. I just spent last week, I spent time in Athens, Georgia, Revenue, Georgia, at a social studies conference for educators. And the first like, breakout session I went to was how to keep history viable in the STEM world. How to keep history viable in the STEM world. And that's basically what this lady was saying is that History is a science, so you kind of have that inquiry model where you question, you have a hypothesis, and the students discover it. It was basically the scientific method, but in history. So my question to you, dear classmate, is, is history a science? All right, so in closing, let's summarize the three questions again. Number one is a biography, or even an autobiography. Is that a historic, or excuse me, an accurate measure of a historical event? Is a biography an accurate measure of a historical event? Number two, is history inevitable? Or a historical event? Was it inevitable? And number three, is history a science? Guys, I hope you have a great week. We're almost there. We're at the midway point. If you think about it, we're almost there. See you later, guys.